Hey everyone, it's Nina. I am a 4-6 emotional manifester and today I'm going to talk about environments, more specifically dry kitchens because that is my environment and it's something that I have been um, really exploring for quite a while. Um, it's something that is really important as a quad right for um, to be in, in the correct environment and it's something that I've experimented with a lot over the last few years. So I have been in my experiment for about three years, and so this is definitely subject to change as I continue uh, with my deconditioning journey. So I'm actually gonna put up my chart really quick so you guys can see uh, what my variables are and um, what my environment, my PHS, everything is, just so you can get a com like an idea of uh, what variables are included with my experience because I've spoken with a lot of other people with dry kitchens and they have different experiences uh, based on whether they're a generator or a projector or um, you know what their digestion is. So I think a lot of these things play a factor in um, and it's not just your environment that you know you have certain experiences. So with a dry environment, typically, you know, raw has spoken like obviously dry places like without a lot of moisture. So in the US, maybe that's like Sedona or Utah or just, you know, places where it's super, super dry. And the kitchen's environment is generally, it's it doesn't have to be literally a kitchen. It can be anywhere where there's some sort of mutation happening. There's alchemy, there are things being mixed in and um, ideas are being created and put together. And, you know, it could be as simple as going to an AA meeting and there's mutation happening there because people are going through the 12 steps and they're talking things out and they're growing and they are mutating themselves and their consciousness in the way that they live. So it can really, like the kitchen's environment can be so many different things. And it could be as simple as sitting in a coffee shop and listening to people you know, around you have different meetings and they're bringing ideas together. And it's just a place where things come together, are being created and alchemized and mutated and um, formed into something that's, you know, moving forward or things that are being created. So, you know, it could be very well a kitchen where you're actually making things or you're sitting in a kitchen and you're doing work and someone is making something and that could be a healthy environment for you to be in. So it's definitely something to experiment with. Um, like I said, there are other variables that come into play, especially being like being a quad right, you know, being in really busy, loud places isn't the healthiest place for me to be because I'm taking in so much information. So it can be overwhelming. So, uh, as a, a dry kitchens environment, I have found that the kitchens aspect, I can go to a coffee shop that feels really good, that feels spacious, that feels homey, that feels more warm, and it's more quiet and more chilled out. So I'm not constantly taking in all this information. And my open G is also um, like a huge determinant of what my environment feels best for me and my cognition is actually feeling as well. So with all of these factors combined, um, it really helps me to figure out what the best environment is for me to be in. So, um, you know, one of my favorite places to go is just a chill coffee shop to work where there's not a lot of so uh, sounds or a lot of um, music. Sometimes I like to, to work outside if it's warm out and um, I'm not in the direct sun, I'm in direct light. So it's difficult for me to concentrate and to do work when I'm in an environment that feels, um, or like when the sun is directly on me. Um, and it is a little bit diff difficult when I'm in an overly warm environment for me to really uh, concentrate. So the the dry aspect, I don't personally resonate with being in a dry environment. I have been to dry environments and my body has not responded well to it. I get dehydrated really quickly and I just don't feel good. And um, so from a literal sense, a dry environment, it's not like, like having actual dry environment is not where I like to be or where my body likes to be. However, I have heard that, you know, dry can be translated into having uh, like a temperature controlled environment. So for me, like living in Florida, just being in the complete hot, humid air, I actually really liked it, even though it wasn't like a controlled environment, like it felt good to just be in the heat. 
And then when I would go inside and have air conditioning, it would feel good to have that temperature regulated. And so um, having control of the consistency of my environment is really, really important. I'm currently in Ohio right now for who knows how long, and I am experiencing what I experienced as I grew up in this environment where the temperature can drop down to like 30 and then be up to 70 later on in the day. And that is really, really tough on my body. So having these highs and these lows in the actual temperature is really difficult. So from that dry perspective, having this 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 control over the temperature is, is really um, healthy for me and my body and how I experience it. So in the, in the sense that it's not literal, like, being in a an environment where there's not a lot of, a lot of moisture, I have heard people explain, you know, dry kitchens being almost as if you're in an environment where the paint has finished dry, drying. And so, someone actually in a, a quad right group actually posted this, and so I'm just sharing this because I had never heard of it um, explained in this way. But it's almost as if you know you're painting a wall and the the paint is still wet. And so there's still like, like change happening where there's still things that are up in the air and they're not completely finished. And then when the paint has finished and it drying and it's like completely done, that's almost like, you know, the finished product where, um, you know, the paint has dried and things are complete. And so I didn't really resonate too much with that. And maybe that's partly because I'm a manifester and I love to be the initiator. I love to be the person who kickstarts things. I don't necessarily like to be involved in the actual mix of the ideas that are being um, like created and no action is taken or like the actual putting together of things and execution or the finish. Like for me, the excitement is more of like the initiation and the the pooling of resources and people and things together. So I'm curious if anyone else who is Dry Kitchens has experienced this um, because I had never heard of that before. And I think it could be true for some people based on your profile and your type and different variables within your chart. So that is my experience with Dry Kitchens. Like I said, I I actually really love being in the sunshine and being in humid environments. And so being in Florida, like it seems like it wouldn't make sense because I'm dry kitchens and indirect light, but being in the sunshine, it like literally gives me life. And then living on the ocean, it's not like, like total, total humidity because you have the breeze from the ocean. And so the water, it like makes me feel like there's life. And so being around such a big, powerful force, um, which is the ocean, like it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like, you know, there's, there's comfort in that because there's life in water and there's energy. And when I'm in a dry environment, it actually feels like it sucks the life out of me. So it's really interesting to observe how I'm feeling in different environments. And like I said, a lot of other variables come into play with my open G and, um, you know, my environment and then also my digestion. And like I said, it's kind of weird because I'm indirect light, but I love to be in the sunlight. And that's actually for another video. I actually did another video on indirect light. And so I go into more detail that and you can read the comments and see what people have said about that particular digestion. But it's interesting to see how this all comes together, especially as a quad right when the digestion and the environment is one of the first things that Ross said is super important um, to really implement more quickly or more or sooner in your actual de deconditioning process than if you were not a quad right because of the importance of the digestion and the environment. But I don't necessarily resonate resonate with um, <laughs> with all aspects of it. But like I said, other variables um, come into play and I'm only three years into my deconditioning process. So over time, you know, I'm open to this changing and um, seeing what unfolds. But I just wanted to come on here and share my experience and uh, also hear what everyone else has to say. There really isn't much about, you know, this specific environment other than Raw's material. And so I'm curious, yeah, to hear what everyone else has to say. So leave a comment below and uh, 
Let's see what everyone has to say and what their experience is. All right. Bye, guys.